Hello, my loves. Just filmed this video about an hour ago, <laughs> walking uphill and I listened to it back and it sounded awful because I was huffing and puffing. So I'm gonna do it again. Here we go. Last night, Adam and I were watching the news. No, that's a lie. Adam was watching the news while I was making dinner. That's important. That's an important piece of information <laughs> because of one of his reactions. Anyway, on the news, it was breaking news. It was a press conference by a sheriff in Bibb County, B-I-B-B -B County, Georgia. There were four men that escaped from his jail, a white male who was convicted of homicide, and then three black men who all had various drug charges. Two were awaiting federal charges. One was drug trafficking, and also he was accused of felon in possession charges, and the other one I think was just drug trafficking. I'm not positive because normally I have notes on this kind of stuff, and today I'm just riffing off memory because I want to get this out. It's happening in real time, but I am going to put it in if you're interested right now. Four inmates that are out at large at this time. Uh, those inmates are 52-year-old Joey Fournier, white male, gray hair, blue eyes, five feet, nine inches tall, weighs 140 pounds. He's been held in the County Jail for murder. Second inmate is 24-year-old Mark Kerry Anderson, black male with dreads, five feet, nine inches tall, and weighs 165 pounds. He's being held for aggravated assault. Third inmate is 37-year-old Jonifer Darnell Barnwell, Jonifer Barnwell, black male, five feet, nine Weighing about 190 pounds. He was being held for the U.S. Marshals for the uh, uh, for the U.S. Marshals for drug charges. The fourth inmate is 29-year-old Chavis Demario Stokes, black male, black hair, five feet seven inches tall, weighing 160 pounds. He was being held for uh, possession of a firearm uh, by a felon as well as drug trafficking. We're right now investigating this, uh, trying to piece together what all happened to cause this escape to take place last night. Um, the uh, way that the escape happened was that somebody had discovered at six o'clock in the morning a hole in the fence around the jail, and so they rolled back the cameras and they saw that these inmates got out around three o'clock in the morning from a window in a day room. Now, how they got out, um, they're not exactly sure, but when they rolled back the footage and they're watching on the video outside by the fence, a blue, like to me it was an electric blue Dodge Challenger. He's calling it sky blue, so I don't know if it just looks different in the video. So sky blue to me is like a light powder blue regardless pulled up and it looked like he was tampering it with the fence they said that it looked like the driver dropped off things to help with the escape then it's not 100 percent clear they're not all the way sure yet it looked as if they came and they brought that stuff back like tools they were thinking maybe whatever was dropped off to help with the escape so i don't know if that means they went back inside and then that was at like three o'clock in the morning then they got out at six o'clock in the morning not exactly 100 percent sure the other thing that they don't know 100% is if the Challenger stayed and drove those guys off or if a different car came and picked them up. They do say they have reason to believe that the inmates are not on foot. They have been picked up. That said, <laughs> um, the schools in the surrounding area was not were notified. I only giggle because I'm like remembering things um, that I said in a different order in the first video. <laughs> so that's why I giggled. It's not a funny situation. Uh, I'm just laughing at myself the way I'm reporting this back. But anyway, they did notify the schools. The one school that was closest to the facility decided to do what they call a lock-in day, meaning school is in, sh is in session, but it's just a very locked down version of school. Then again, they also said that they really believe that those men are not even close to the area. They think they're out of the county and probably out of the state because again, they have reason to believe, they didn't say what the reason is, but they have reason to believe that they escaped via vehicle, not on foot. So going back, one of the questions that the press asked to the sheriff during the press release was the, what was staffing like during this time? And he said, we've been short staffed for a very, very long time. The way that he said it sounded like years. And my opinion, this is just my opinion, probably goes back to COVID because that's when most short staff shortages, not just in prisons, but like in most um, genres, what am I trying to say? What's the word I'm looking for? But like in most areas of employment are short staff. But the reason I said it was important that Adam, that I let you know that Adam was watching TV and I was in the kitchen making dinner was because at this point he said, we had less than 10 staff members working that night for a facility of over 800 inmates. And when he said that, Adam goes, what? He like yelled, what? Are you kidding? And then he literally rewound it to make sure he heard it correctly. So they had 
less than 10 people working for over 800 inmates. For somebody like Adam, who served over 20 years, over 24 years between state and federal incarcerations, is that a word? Anyway, he was shocked, like floored. So they asked him like, what would full staff, what would a full staffed night be? And they said for any shift, full staff is 30. But again, they have not had full staff in what sounded to me was years. He was like a very, very long time. He said, what happens is like, even if they have, let's say max 15 people working, somebody will call out. Somebody will have to leave early because an emergency, they're never full staffed. He says they've worked nights. Uh, it seemed like kind of often where they had six to eight people working for 800 inmates. And that's the thing. The last time I reported on, uh, somebody that escaped prison, was only about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, okay? Now let's think about this. I've been doing YouTube surrounded prison, prison wife, uh, this area for 10 years. And in the years before, all the years leading up to those, these two, I've done a story on one escape. That escape um, was by a man, I'll say escape in quotes, because the man escaped from a federal prison camp, meaning there's no fences. He didn't have to break out. He walked away and it was considered an escape, which is an escape, but you know what I'm saying? These are like county jails that should be way more secure. And in addition to these staffing issues, which huge, also they're saying in this one specific instance, he's like, it's not an excuse. However, the jail is about 45 years old. So there are security risks that we need to address, identify and address. However, they were asking like, well, tell us when you're gonna do that. And he said, think of it like a busted pipe, right? He said, you need to stop the water from surging before you fix the pipe. In this instance, the analogy was that they need to find those four guys before they figure out what's going on inside. Sorry, I got interrupted by a phone call from Adam. So anyway, they need to find those four men before they figure out what's going on. They were also saying that they have no reason to believe that, or they don't know if these guys were connected on the outside, but they're pretty sure that they were connected on the inside. <laughs> I'm laughing because I, my opinion, I doubt that they were connected on the inside. I mean, I'm sorry. I doubt that they were connected on the outside. Of, however, of course they were connected on the inside because <laughs> they escaped together. They were saying they don't know if they're still together. My opinion, they're probably not. I, that's my assumption. I have no idea, but honestly, I don't think so because they were probably like, all right, good job. We're all going our separate ways. Like, good luck to you. And that said, I truly believe that unlike Daniela Calvacante, who was gone for just about two weeks, I think a day shy of two weeks, something like that, uh, September, who escaped from Pennsylvania, I genuinely think they will find these guys um, rather quickly. Uh, maybe not all of them at the same time, but I think they're gonna find one and he's gonna talk. I was reported on two, but I think there was a third one in Mississippi that I missed. So two or three in a span of four weeks, a couple months, like that's that's a lot. The staffing shortages is a huge deal. Um, the other thing that really stood out was that blue car. So he was saying, the sheriff was saying, it's a very unique car. Part of me was wondering, is it a decoy? Cause you would think, wouldn't you wanna drive up and let's say like a black Honda? a gray minivan, like an electric blue Dodge Challenger, kind of a unique car. Kind of somebody can turn around and be like, oh, I know, like Billy Joe down the street drives that car. But anyway, he said it was early in the morning, not many cars were on the road. So if anybody has any connection, any information on that blue car to please call it in. The other thing that I thought was very interesting was that they asked if, well, the press asked if uh, they thought that the communication for this to happen took place over cell phones or, you know, does he think that there are cell phones in his jail? And he was like, listen, there are cell phones in every jail and every prison everywhere. We would be naive to think that there weren't. The amount that we confiscate on a daily and weekly basis just here, like every warden, every captain, everybody everywhere, they know that it's a thing. So they don't know for a fact but they're not ruling that out. In my own personal opinion, I believe that, yes, that's that's 100%, I believe that's what happened. I think people are smart enough now not to connect with people about things like this uh, on you know, anything that could be monitored because why would they if they have access to cell phones that um, 
they think or not. However, that reminds me, I didn't see this the first time, so I'm glad I do this again. Adam went to, um, he to go to a jail conference. Uh, and in one of the sessions that he sat in was all about technology because he is so enthralled by technology and AI and all of that stuff. And they said their ability now, the technology has advanced so far that you think that you're wiping a phone, but within a matter of seconds, they can download all the information, every single number that was called on there, everything. So, because there's a lot of times that people would make calls, wipe the phone, you know, wipe the phone numbers off and they think that they're in the clear. That's not necessarily the case now. Will they go into that much, let's say detail when they confiscate a cell phone every single time? I can't say they won't, but I, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure unless they're looking for something very, very specific, but again, I'm not sure. So um, yeah, so he acknowledged that. And I'm trying to think what else I said on the first video that I'm forgetting now because there was so much. But the last update that I've been able to find today is Tuesday the 17th. It is around a little before two o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So it's five o'clock Eastern Time. So maybe there'll be a press conference soon. But as of this very moment, the last information I found was over 15 hours ago when this broke. So I think that, you know, if they found them, they would probably have done or will do a live press conference in the moment. And I'll keep you guys posted. I'll let you know when they find them, if they find them, or if time progresses like the other one, I will keep filling you guys in on any updates. I just hope nobody gets hurt or killed, you know, like we were saying the last one. But again, um, I truly believe that they're gonna catch at least one, maybe maybe a couple of them are still together if they were really tight, but I think they all probably went their separate ways. Oh, they're a person of interest they're looking at was the white man's brother, evidently, allegedly. Somebody had asked that and the sheriff just kind of sort of answered in a very political way. So we'll see what happens there, but can't believe I'm here back with this video. I was in the middle of a vlog for you guys. That was kind of a fun one. Um, and I had some other topics I wanted to cover, but funny, the last video on my channel was about the escaped prisoner in Pennsylvania. And now here we have another escape. So I'll keep you guys posted. I love you and I'll see you in the next one.